Recording a set of drums can be really challenging. There's a lot of gear involved, knowing where to place it, knowing what to do with it. It all can be a really daunting task. I'm here to tell you, you can do it on a budget and it can sound great. The drums you're listening to were recorded on a system that cost me $500 brand new. An SSL 2 Plus two channel recording interface, a Shure SM57, which is probably the world's most common microphone, and a Shure SM58, which is probably the world's most common vocal microphone. You can find both of these microphones brand new anytime, anywhere for $99. You can find them used everywhere for a lot less than that. The SSL 2 Plus is really easy to use. It sounds great, and it costs about 250 bucks brand new. There are also countless used interfaces out there. When you're first getting started, just plug your interface into your computer and use whatever DAW you're comfortable with. I have been using Logic forever, works great for me, and I use it on professional recordings every day. You can use GarageBand if it comes with your computer. You can use whatever comes, as long as it can record audio, it's gonna work. Of course, you're gonna need two XLR cables. These are the cables for your microphones. One end is male, one end is female. I would go for 20, 25 feet, just to make sure you have enough to get between your drums and your computer. You'll need two stands as well. I'd recommend a tall one and a short one to start. They don't have to be especially heavy because these are not very heavy microphones. Now, where to place the microphones? I'm gonna keep this really simple. Put one in your bass drum and one over the drums. It's a great picture of the kit from top to bottom, and it works really well with just these two cheap dynamic microphones. I'll show you. Here's a good place to start. Take your drumsticks, put one in the center of the snare, stack the other on top, and right here is a good place for the tip of the overhead mic to sit. And there we go. Centered right over the snare drum, two sticks difference. This is, I find, a really good place to start. You know, it gets the mics pretty close to the drums, but not so close that you're gonna hit it when you're playing. And if you do recording, test it out, see what it sounds like. If you're getting too much of the hi-hat, maybe move it slightly this way away from the hi-hat, you know, too much of the ride cymbal, move it back this way. Sometimes I'll just put it more over the exact center of the kit, sort of in between the, the bass drum, snare drum, toms kind of area. One thing to really be aware of, you have one microphone, so it's gonna pick up whatever your balance is. If you're hitting the cymbals really hard and barely hitting the snare drum, the cymbals are gonna be really loud. You don't have any control of that. So this is also a good way to practice, you know, the proper touch and technique for recording, which often means play the cymbals a lot quieter than you would say on a live show or in a video shoot. Let's mic up the bass drum next. We're gonna use in this example, our trusty SM57, which you know is famous as a snare drum mic. It's one of the most famous snare drum mics that have, has ever been in the studio. However, you can use it on a kick drum. You can use it on toms. You can use it on all sorts of stuff. Most front heads on a bass drum these days have a hole so that you can place the microphone inside the drum. And I would recommend starting out, just put it right even with the hole and point it where the beater hits the head. That's a good first place to start. Then experiment. Take your tape measure, let's say this is the head and there's a hole right here. So you're gonna take it right at the hole, an inch inside, two inches, three inches, and then experiment pointing it both directly at the beater and then more towards the, the side of the shell. You'll be surprised at how different the sounds can be. And eventually you're gonna find the sweet spot where in your room, on your drum, with your microphones and your system, where it sounds best. It's gonna to be totally different in your room than it is in mine, but this is a good way to start testing it out. Now that our microphones are placed, let's go inside the computer and set some levels and check the phasing. All right, there are two things we're gonna look at to set up these microphones. First of all, we're gonna set a proper level so that we're getting a good strong signal, but not so strong that it's distorting. 
And second, we're gonna check the phase. And that has to do with the sound waves, whether they are helping each other and making a fuller so sound or canceling each other out and making a really thin, lousy sound, which you don't want. As I mentioned, I'm using Logic Pro. I've been using Logic Pro since 2007, 2008. I've never used anything else. It's worked great for me. However, use whatever works for you and find something that records multiple channels of audio and you'll be good. If you're not sure which one to use, you could use GarageBand if you're using a Mac. There are lots of other options, some free, some paid. If you have a friend who knows how to use any one of them, maybe pick that one to start if they can show you some tips to just get up and running. We're gonna look at these two channels that I just recorded and kick drum and overhead. So let's talk about the levels first. If you look at the mixer down here, Let's look at where these mics are hitting. The kick. And the overhead. Notice how they're peaking right around negative six, negative nine, somewhere in there. The way the scale works is zero is the ceiling. That's the highest you wanna go. Get your levels to maybe about negative six or negative nine with your hardest hit. You know, hit the snare drum really hard, make it peak at about negative six or ne negative nine. That gives you a little bit of room to work with just in case you happen to play even a little louder than that. You're not, you're not gonna go into distortion. But if you go too low, then you're gonna get um, kind of a, a quiet signal that you'll have to boost. And when you boost that signal, it'll, it can get a little noisy. So try to find that nice sweet spot where the, your, your strongest hits are peaking like at negative six, negative nine, negative 12, somewhere in there, and you'll be good. Let's look at one other thing, and it's not quite as apparent on these particular tracks. I'm gonna zoom in. So we have the kick drum signal. There's the waveform, and notice how it has peaks and valleys. So the peak goes up, it hits right here. Notice that the mono overhead is also capturing that kick drum mic. It's not getting a whole lot of low end, but it's also getting that same peak. Notice, however, that it's shifted. That peak up here happens a little bit later. And that's because the kick drum mic is right inside the kick drum. So that's getting the signal first. The mono overhead is further away. So it just physically takes longer for the sound to reach it. And again, that, that mono overhead mic is not picking up very much low end. So it's not really getting much of that kick drum signal. But you can see it's a little delayed. See how right here, the, the signal has gone down on the kick drum mic, and then right here, the signal is actually going up, and the down part of the signal is over here. What that means is this is actually going to be canceling out a little bit of the, of the low end. And that brings us to what's called phase. You wanna get your microphones in phase with each other. That means when it's recording, it's capturing the waveforms as they both go up at the same time, as opposed to one going up as the other one goes down and those start canceling out and you lose a lot of low and it can sound pretty ugly pretty quickly. It's not gonna be as noticeable here because that mic just isn't picking up that much low end. So the way to set that is we can check it digitally in this case and I'm gonna use this particular plugin called the gain and the gain is going to, it'll flip the phase digitally. It'll, it'll change it so that instead of going up to start, it'll go down. And let's see if that makes a difference. Okay, so that's with the phase not inverted. Here's with it inverted. Here are the kick drum just got a little bit fuller. There's, it's, you can hear it a little bit better. It's got a little more low end. Again, this could be really dramatic if, you know, if there are two mics both capturing a lot of low end and one of them is out of phase with the other. I mean, you'll hear it instantly, all of a sudden the low end just disappears. So this one, it's not quite as dramatic, but it's definitely there. So what you would want to do is flip the phase on one of your preamp inputs. And that's the, the button, it's the circle with the line through it. So flip it, hit that button, and you should be tracking both in the right phase with each other. Cool, I mean, it sounds like drums. It has everything from high to low. These are really inexpensive mics that really aren't exactly even designed for this purpose. But as you can hear, you can make music with this.
one thing we haven't really talked about is the actual room you're recording in. And my particular room is nothing special. It's just an old office in an old leather factory. It's about 20 by 20 with nine foot ceilings. Um, a lot of us record in our bedrooms or a garage or somewhere that was never designed by an acoustician to be a room for recording drums. And you can find that there can be some real acoustic challenges. So one thing I'm going to explore next is treating the area around the, the drum to sort of deaden the room a little bit and take care of some of the low end. Low end can be a real challenge in recording drums because in a room that's not set up for it, the low end can just take over everything and kind of give you this really muddy, indistinct mix. So I'm going to experiment with adding some gobos. These are panels of compressed fiberglass wrapped in fabric and just stuck in a pine frame. I made them myself and and um, I'll put a link to where the video is showing how I did it. It's a lot of work. It ends up being kind of expensive, but it's really useful and you know, I'll have these forever unless I, they get burned in a fire or something. So let's record it. I'm going to show you first without the gobos and then with, we'll compare and contrast. It makes a big difference. And if you don't have the time, the budget, and the pretty rudimentary carpentry skills to build these, I totally understand. You could try using things like um, old futons, you know, those futon sofas. Those are really thick and work really well in terms of soaking up some low end. Stick it in the corner behind your drums. Um, maybe you could hang some heavy packing blankets or, you know, just heavy blankets to sort of deaden if you're getting kind of uh, too much high end from your room. Just anything to just sort of deaden the drums and soak up some low end. And basically to soak up low end, you need some thick fiberglass like material. Um, it's a very complicated subject and people spend decades of their lives starting it out. So. I'm not going to cover it too deep here, but just know you can kind of tighten things up. Also, if you have a low ceiling, say, you know, a bedroom with a, a eight foot ceiling or something, you might want to try to figure out a way to maybe get a packing blanket above you because the symbols just going, you know, bouncing off sheetrock and right back into your mics can be kind of an ugly sound. If you put one of those heavy packing blankets above you, it can really um, sort of soak up some of the high end and give you a better sound for your drum mixes. Let's go into the computer and mix these raw drum tracks and see what we can come up with. I'm just gonna do a very basic, very high level mix here. And the goal is to just get a good sound that you could use for social media, for example, or if you are cutting demo drums for a client and you wanna just give a sense of, of what you're hearing. One thing, if you're not really comfortable mixing yet and haven't learned how all the controls work and all the different variables and, and parameters available on every plugin, how they all tie together, just use presets. It's okay. It's, you know, pull up your EQ and there will probably be drum presets, kick drum, snare drum, overhead presets. Just flip through, find the one you like, take a look and see what the EQ curve is doing and, you know, why would it be sounding that way based on, on what this preset says but it's okay if it sounds good it is good don't worry about it same with compressors eq our reverb everything else let's solo the bass drum and see what it sounded like by itself so you can hear the kick drum plain as day there's some other snare drum and the rest of the kit is in there. It's a little muffled. So we're gonna see what we can do to clean that up. First thing, let's just pull up our EQ, channel EQ. So as you can see, this is all the low end and there's really not anything in the highs. It's not picking up the hi-hat or anything like that. Um, let's just try a preset. Drums, clean up kick. Voila, that's, that's, 
That sounds a lot better right there. So that's a very complicated curve. I don't know why this was probably based on some session when they were making logic and some particular kick drum had a lot of carving to do to get this particular curve. But as you can see, sounds a lot better. There's, there's a kick drum sound. Let's try another one. Uh, punchy kick. It's a much simpler curve. Sounds good. Refresh the kick. That sounds good to me. We'll stick with that one. Okay. See how easy that is? I mean, you know, would a professional mix engineer do this? Actually, yes. <laughs> I know lots of professional mix engineers who just scroll through presets, find the one they like, and then you're like, ah, oh, it's, uh, you know, I want to boost a little bit more here at 80 hertz. <laughs> That's it. Voila, it's done. All right, let's look at the overhead. So notice, as I said, there really is almost no low end in that mic. It's really just getting the highs. There's the peak of the snare drum. There are the toms. But there's no low end from the kick, which actually is, is good for us because we're not, we don't have two microphones sort of fighting for the same sonic territory. So let's try a preset here. Overhead mic EQ. See what they did there? They just raised the high end, and you know, the cymbals are a little bit crispier. That sounds better. Almost the same thing. That sounds good to me. Okay, we'll put them together. Cool. You know, that sounds good. It sounds like drums to me. So I have these two microphones summing into this channel, which controls them both at the same time. Now, using this channel, we can actually affect the entire drum mix all at once instead of just individual channels. So let's put some compression on. Compression always sounds good on drums. All right, we'll try a few ones. Classic drums. Okay, notice, notice this level right here. It's at zero, zero, the drums got a lot louder. And there's one thing to be aware of, which is the louder is always better uh, mode, which is basically if you're trying to compare two sources and one's louder than the other one, your ear just naturally gravitates towards the louder one as sounding the better, which uh, isn't always the case. So you have to make sure you're level matching, which is to say, you know, let's turn the, Let's turn this compressor off. See where it's hitting? It's peaking about nine, negative six right now, right here. Turn it on, and all of a sudden, it got a lot louder. So we need to back off the output game. So now it's peaking right around here, negative six again. So, you know, that sounds pretty good. Sounds like drums. Let's pick another one. Um, same thing. So I'm backing off the output gain to sort of make sure our levels are the same. That sounds good too. You know, there's a drum mix. Is it game changing? Is it revolutionary? No. Does it sound perfectly good and acceptable and you can clearly hear the kit? Yes, and all we did was just put a couple of um, EQ and compression presets and flip the gain. So now that this might be a little bit more obvious, let's turn the gain off to see if we can hear the difference. Notice how when I turn it off, it just kind of, the drums aren't quite as present, you know? There's just not as much there. Flip the phase so that it, um, everything's in phase and it's just a little bit fuller, a little bit deeper. As you can hopefully see here, 
a lot of recording drums is just having a well-tuned, good sounding set of drums and knowing how to play them. Also knowing how to play to the mic so that you're not, you know, overpowering the one microphone with the cymbals at the expense of the drums. If you want to go much deeper into the world of recording drums, mixing, production, session drumming, follow the link below for my website, Creating the Sound, where my production partner, Cooper Anderson, and I go really deep on a whole bunch of really cool topics that uh, I think you'll learn a lot. Also, if you follow the link below for our website and this video, you will see some bonus materials where we compare the very inexpensive mics and preamps we're using to much more expensive versions. So you can kind of get a feel of, you know, is it worth it for me to spend a lot more money on very expensive gear or not because it might not be this might work totally fine for you and if it does that's a good thing good for you also if you need help setting up your own drum rig and want to expand beyond this very simple rig here we can help you follow the link for our consulting service the gear i used in this video is very inexpensive and i chose these two particular mics because they're just so incredibly common and you can probably get your hands on them borrowing from a friend or, you know, uh, a local institution or something. I can recommend if you're actually going to go out and buy stuff to start your first drum recording rig, the SM57 is a great place to start. And, and maybe, you know, you can use that either on the kick drum or as the overhead. Uh, later on, it's a classic snare drum mic when you add more channels and maybe a dedicated kick drum mic. There are lots of them out there from really cheap to several hundred dollars. The easiest way I've found to kind of get an idea of what sort of microphones I want is to look for online shootouts and, you know, just Google bass drum microphone shootout and you'll have a whole bunch of examples to listen to. And you'll hear each mic captures a very different picture of each drum and listen to them and you'll, you'll start picking out a model that, all oh, right, I. I like the sound of that mic in that shootout and I like the sound of it in that shootout and maybe that's a mic for me to try. It's a fun challenge, but it gets expensive. So hopefully you can find the one mic that works for you and just be done with it. If this was helpful to you, please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can hear when uh, we have some new stuff for you. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or concerns and happy recording.